school is in. Arby's versus fuel injection. Are Carby's still relevant? Well, yes they are. Um, in certain circumstances they are. It doesn't, you know, bode well for carburetors with multi-cylinder engines. The issue there with, with um, you know, carbies is is that you've got to actually have one carby for each cylinder. So on multi-cylinder bikes, carbies are, um, a, you know, a, a fair amount of complex gear sitting next to the engine. And fuel injection, on the other hand, we only have to have four throttle plates and sensors. These can be mounted in, in any orientation. They don't have to have a float pole. They don't rely on gravity in any way. Uh, that opens up a lot of avenues for um, engine placement, fuel tank placement, seat, everything else. Uh, it allows more flexibility in the bike in that respect. Cars, well, it's fairly obvious because cars had single carburetors attached to manifolds that uh, just had major issues. Um, motorcycles have always had multi carburetors for uh, each cylinder, so they've been far more efficient from the get go for cars for a long time. And so, carburetors uh, have persisted because um, fuel injection, when it first came out, the same time on cars in the early 1980s, the GPZ Kawasaki was the first bike I saw with EFI. Um, it didn't really have anything to offer over um, multi carbs. Okay, it's only later laws, emissions laws, that have eventually forced them to EFI. But um, consideration and cost benefit, fuel injection getting cheap, getting cheaper components of it, and more efficient um, carbies for multi cylinder applications are definitely uh, losing the race. However, on a single cylinder engine. That's different, okay? On a single cylinder engine, we've got constraints of weight, size, compactness, um, providing electrical energy from the engine um, to power a fuel pump system and an electronic control module, which the module doesn't take much, but the fuel pump does a bit. And being off-road, um, the, um, the possibility of being stuck in remote places um, where a carburetor can be rectified with some pretty basic tools and, of course, knowledge on how the carby works. Um, whereas um, electronic fuel injection does require a little bit of diagnostic equipment, which is um, not easy to carry with you um, in your uh, backpack. Um, you know, you might be able to carry injectors and these things and stuff like that, and plug it in, but then you know you've got to just guess what it is and start plugging stuff in. And if you've got a terminal problem, then you just kill new components plugging them in, so um, that becomes a problem for off-road, um, for anything with a weight um, consideration. As you can see with those small block carbies that fit the chainsaws, um, it's pretty hard to beat those for uh, compact, uh, lightweight operation with a fuel injection system that would require a bit of extra equipment, would require electrical generation of power um, for a chainsaw that is not practical. So there is still um, plenty of engine applications that will use carburetors, but we won't be seeing carburetors on multi cylinder engines. Um, so at this point, I will say goodbye to our multi cylinder carbu carburetors and um, we'll start getting into EFI. But I just want to top off a little bit about tuning um, the uh, single carburetor um, and uh, just a couple of extra tips about that some tools to use if you have got a uh, carburetor. I've spoken earlier about the plug testing and the feel of the engine doing roll on and roll off tests and whatnot but um, you know these days it's pretty cheap to buy yourself a um, exhaust gas temperature sensor, a cylinder head temperature sensor and uh, even an O2 sensor uh, and use those to actually tune the engine. So what I'm going to do is cover a little bit of that and then we're going to start getting into EFI. Exhaust gas and cylinder head temperature gauges. You may have seen this type of plug before. This is a thermocouple. You don't need to buy one of these little kits. You've got a thermocouple on a big screen and you can actually watch the temperature. It's pretty good because you want to be watching the road if you're riding along the road. But if you're on a dyno, you want to be 
it's uh, having something that you can actually see where you're sitting because you've got to watch it close and there's two types there's one that measures your cylinder head temperature and that is generally for air cooled engines essentially what the cylinder head temperature gauge does is it tells you the heat of the actual uh, cylinder like a uh, temperature gauge does in a liquid cool system so it's pretty much your temperature gauge in the absence of one in an air cooled engine and as such like your water cooled gauge it's got a maximum amount of temperature that you can operate the engine at and you'll see whether your engine's getting too hot likewise with the CHT there will be a, a particular maximum temperature you want to be running the engine at so essentially that is telling you um, whether your maximum temperature over a period of time is actually uh, going to exceed what the motor will handle. The exhaust gas temperature gauge on the other hand measures exhaust gas temperatures okay so the cylinder head temperature is measuring um, the uh, heat from the combustion that is going into the engine cylinder walls and the exhaust gas probe is measuring the heat from combustion that is going out the exhaust pipe. Uh, what we're aiming for when we're tuning is our maximum exhaust gas temperature and maintaining a maximum exhaust gas temperature without exceeding our CHT and destroying the engine. Now the thing is with exhaust gas temperature the exhaust gas temperature is a product of the burning uh, or the combustion of most of the mixture or all of the mixture inside a combustion chamber is all burnt as efficiently as possible and the most power gained then we will have the highest exhaust temperature and if we have a situation where our temperature is below that it can be either rich or lean the lean condition will get less fuel in less combustion less temperature at the exhaust gas too rich a mixture okay less combustion and cooling and same effect low temperature so when we're thinking about an engine accelerating and increasing its power to its maximum then what we would expect to see is a rise in temperature up to our peak point now that would tell us that we're actually um, on the curve of accelerating in the richness in the rich side okay but if we got up to peak power and then the temperature went down uh, that wouldn't be from an excess of fuel that would be from a lean condition that would cause the temperature to fall so essentially what we're looking for in our exhaust gas is a rise in temperature and a constant temperature when we're holding power without a drop a subsequent drop in drop in temperature while maintaining full power and if we're going up the curve and we're not going over the top into lean territory then we're at the correct mixture at the correct um, setting for our mixture getting our maximum power uh, which is being expressed at the exhaust gas temperature now if we continue running the engine at that rate that heat of course will eventually be trans, trans you know, a lot of that heat will actually be um, uh, transmitted to the actual engine itself so that will be reflected in the cylinder head temperature now if we continue to run at our peak power ramping up in our exhaust gas temperature we might find that we end up starting to exceed our cylinder head temperature and in this case we're going to have to move back slightly to the rich side so we'll still see our temperature go up as our power and RPM goes up um, and cycles where every run so to speak let's say down a straight and round corners etc um, and then um, the, the total of that over a period of time has to be such that it doesn't exceed the, you know, the uh, cylinder temperature and overheat the engine because that will end badly now if you're considering using a lambda sensor uh, uh, a oxygen sensor o2 sensor you um you know need to be acutely aware that the fact that it is is measuring oxygen 
of a stoichiometric ratio that I spoke about before. And the center of that stoichi stoichiometric ratio, 14.7, is a ratio that will keep an engine at a constant speed. So the problem with that is, is that you were working to ideal mixtures and the engine might not like ideal mixtures. So that if you only used an O2 sensor, you're sensing the oxygen levels in the exhaust, unaware of the actual temperature of the exhaust gas and more specifically the temperature of the cylinder head and the engine itself. Uh, I think that's about time for today. I'll come back to you tomorrow. Uh, okay, that'll do. Mechanic out.